Hey everybody, Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute. We are going to show you how to bond your 3D printed restorations to your custom titanium abutments or tie bases. Now, many people say, why on earth would you 3D print a, a definitive restoration for an implant? Well, there's a lot of good reasons um, out there in the literature. One of them is the dampening effect that resin polymers have on the occlusion and transmitted forces to the bone. Um, the other one is the fact that there are no PDL spaces on an implant, so um, what you want is a material that's gonna be dynamic and fluid, just like the other teeth in the mouth that can um, wear slightly and, and things like that. And lastly, we have a lot of evidence that shows that 3D printed restorations are superior in every way to direct resin restorations, where um, there's over a 97% degree of conversion of the resin, whereas with a direct resin, you only have about a 60% uh, degree of conversion of the methacrylid esters, the double bonds. And additionally, uh, 3D printed resins wear about three times less than direct resins, even the very best direct resin materials. Okay, well, you know, enough of that. I'm going to go into um, how we're actually going to do this. The first and most important step is microabrasion. You want to make sure that you're using about two bars of pressure 10 millimeters away for about 10 seconds. Um, next, we're going to use a silane agent. I like Monobond Plus from Ivoclar because it has three constituent components to the silane, including a sulfur group, which is essential for bonding to that titanium. Um, it has a classic MDP, um, 10 methacryl oxydecyl dihydrogen phosphate. It has a vinyl silane as well, which is beautiful. And so you're going to paint the inside surfaces of your 3D printed restorations, and you're also going to paint the bonding surfaces of your titanium base or your custom abutment here. Um, this, is, this video is dramatically sped up, so you're painting those for about 30 seconds each. Next, you're going to air dry those, and then you're going to paint on... Um, an adhesive. I like Adhes Universal from Ivoclar because it has a below 20 micron film thickness. It has 10 MDP in it, which is essential for, um, it's basically MDP is a wonder um, molecule that's able to bond to many different things well. Um, now, what's unique to this particular protocol um, and compared to if I'm bonding on like natural true structure, like if I'm bonding veneers or things like that, um, is I'm going to actually polymerize this adhesive after I blow it thin. Make sure you blow it thin or else you're going to get binding and you won't get seating of your restoration. The reason why I'm going to polymerize this is because uh, Ivoclar's um, multi-link abutment cement is actually auto cure only. And this is why it's also important to use a dual cure compatib compatible adhesive. If the adhesive is one that's not dual cure compatible, it will set up acidic and the hydrogen will protonate the amines of the tertiary amine benzyl peroxide initiator system, preventing um, curing of the resin cement right along the um, interface where it meets the crown. So um, next step is to finagle some Teflon tape in the access hole. Um, I don't quite have enough here, um, but you, you want to make sure you pack it in tight. So um, it's essential that you don't get resin down into the chamber of your abutment that could interfere with things like the way that the screw fits inside and um, could cause unnecessary friction. These are abutments fabricated by True Abutment. This is all team driven. True Abutment does those designs for me, those screw, screw mentable designs. Um, I don't have to do anything. My team prints them, my team bonds them to the uh, custom uh, bases here. And um, basically I just, well, they screw them in the patient's mouth and then I, we take a check shot and then I torque it. Um, so it's so, so fun to do. The, I find that the printed restorations fit uh, really, really well. You don't have to worry about things like over milling or, or anything like that. Okay, so now we're gonna actually um, coat the titanium here with um, the Ivoclar abutment cement. This is a auto cure only. It is not light cured at all. Um, I thin it out with a micro brush and then I press down really hard and squeeze that restoration. You wanna do that for five full entire minutes. I violate the instructions for use here um, and wipe away the excess cement. You're supposed to just let it set up. But the reason why I have issues with that specifically for gold anodized abutments is um, to remove it, you typically will scratch or uh, damage your gold anodization of the abutment on that subcritical contour and that bothers me. So I don't like doing that. So this is something that's super easy to be able to do. Um, let's go through a few more so you get the kind of protocol down and the way that I do it. And there's a lot of other better ways that I've seen people do that. This is just kind of a one way that works. There's so many cool things in dentistry. There's so many different ways to do things. 
Make sure though that you're squeezing that restoration down for the full five minutes for it to auto set up and auto polymerize and then don't mess with it for 10 minutes after that. Um, I'll show you what you do, what happens when you do. All right, let's do this. This is a molar tooth number 19 here. Again, um, Avaclar's abutment cement. I like that it's opaque because it kind of hides the gold a little bit, um, especially in the anterior zone. It's a super thin coat, but I, I love this stuff. I've not had one debond, and I've done hundreds of these things. Um, I use an alcohol wipe here. Again, this is going against IFU, which are the instructions from use from Avaclar, which state that you just let that set up and then you use a rubber wheel and buff it. Um, I have not had any issues doing it this way. It's been phenomenal. Now, you don't want to mess with it and jank around with it too much after you get them seated. Um, I'll show you an example of what happens when you do. They most likely will come undone because, again, this is a five-minute set time. So here, um, I'm wiping away the excess cement, and I think I'm going to show you guys here. So what, what happens is when you try to pull the Teflon out prematurely before the cement's cured, you're just going to pull it off like I did there. Luckily, I have enough cement to be able to press that back down. But again, um, this is something that is just so easy to do. I love these restorations and I, I find that they're very successful clinically.